Hello, beloved house. Everyone doing? Hello, YouTube family. It's been a minute. I've posted some new videos, new uploads up here, so I hope you're enjoying them. Uh, I thought I would come here and share my new project with you. I've shared it with, I think, TikTok and my other places, but I have not shared my completed Heal Thyself book with you. It's a shadow work book uh, focused on healing trauma and helping you integrate. You know, this is a really great book. I'm, I'm very proud of it. If you are doing ancestors work, you cannot do ancestors work without doing shadow work. You cannot do shadow work without doing ancestors work. This is going to be the heart, the core of your spiritual practices is doing this. When you look at Mayat, when you look at Ifa, when you look at Voodoo, it, we, we always go back to character work because that's going to be your initiation process. That's a part of your spiritual initiation process. Spirit knows once you start doing this kind of work, the universe open, opens up to you a lot more and you become in alignment and you receive more synchronicity. Okay? Because you are updating the frequency and blueprint of your ancestral lineage doing this work. And I don't hear a lot of spiritualists talk about this a lot. So if you got your altar up and you're wondering, hey, what I should be doing, I've been putting offerings on there, I've been putting food on there, I've been doing, you know, I've been doing this and I've been putting up offerings. How you been doing your spiritual work? This is truly ancestral work. Shadow work is truly ancestral work. When you hear people say, I'm doing ancestors work, I had to work on my altar, I, I'm doing my ancestors work, a lot of it is shadow work. Yes, uh, and you and another uh, another good book uh, to look at about that is Soul Path to the Orisha. She talks a little bit about how the uh, tended to the ancestors, like picking a garden, picking weeds out of a garden. So this is your this is because you're gonna be throwing away all those survival traits, all those the character defects that were passed on you by your ancestors, and you're going to upgrade that DNA by doing the work. And I do recommend you cannot do this work alone. And I don't hear a lot of people talk uh, talk about that either. You need support. You need support. Okay? And this is more from a spiritual perspective, a mental perspective. You can also get you a therapist, a counselor as well. You know, uh, and if you book a session with me and you say, hey, Miss Penny, I really don't have support, you know. I really need support. You know, I don't have anyone but you and I don't have anyone else. I will hook you up with free resources where uh, you can get that free support that you need. You can go to group therapy with others who may have the same experience that you have had. We need to be around people that's healing on their frequency so we'll know what it looks like, what it feels like, and what it may look like in us when we start doing our healing. We need to be around those experiences because we need to get out of that old soil that, that we were seated in, that we grew in, and we have to be planted in new soil. And that is establishing new relationship with healed people. Okay? Or establishing healthy relationships after we have received uh, support. But we have to do it because we want the accountability. And we need to know what it looks like. Okay? We don't know if you come from a dysfunctional family. If you, you know. And again, we have had so many programs put on us. We have the colonization of racism put on us. We have the colonization of patriarchy put on us. There are so many programs that you need to unpeel. It may take you a while to unpeel it. So you might have to integrate a little bit at a time, but it needs to happen. Okay? And we need that support with peeling back some of these programs and looking at things at a different perspective because that gives us clarity. We are uh, improving our conscious contact with our divine guidance once we start peeling back some of these mental and spiritual programs that no longer serve us. We have a better contact with our higher power spirit guides. Uh, ancestors, whatever you want to call it, but I guarantee your intuition will heighten and your spiritual connection will become stronger after doing this work. Okay, you can't, you know, I I, I don't see a lot of people talking about it. And what I like the uh, like what I like a like about the this book in the first beginning, we talk about the family tree. 
Oh my gosh, we go right into the family tree. I love this about the book because for me, the family tree was my aha moment. My family tree, when I got to really looking at this family tree, and then we went over and started looking at the diagram and breaking down who was who, you know, who was the alcoholic, who was the latest man, who was the womanizer, you know, we, I started really labeling things over here. Oh my gosh, I found out I wouldn't have turned out any other way. When you start looking at it, because in the first phase, you're going to see everything that's going on with you. Any issues that you have going on, codependency or any of that, you're going to find out what's going on with you. And you're going to see the support that you need. And we also talk about different therapies in this book that you can choose from, uh, that you'll benefit from with doing your shadow work. Okay? So we talk about that in the book as well. And I'm telling you, the first phase of this program, I at, at first phase in here, all my stuff came out. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe all the stuff that was going on with me. I was like, oh my gosh, I am, I'm really controlling. I'm really a fixer. I'm really codependent. And I think the uh, the issue with me was we had a ish, I had an issue with my daughter. She missed her her bus to her summer trip, and I was on vacation. But I set everything up for her. She was 17 years old, so she was old enough to get on that trip, get on that bus by herself because I did every I I did everything but pack for her. She that she was good to go. So she calls me while I'm on my summer trip because I think me and her father, I mean her stepfather, had went out of town for his birthday. And so uh she called me and she called me. Uh and she said, Hey, I miss I missed my trip. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was I was frantic. Uh, and I, I, you know, I was, I was so upset with her. I was like, I don't know. I kept telling you to over and over again. I gave you the time. I, I gave, how could you miss that? How could you, I just couldn't understand how she missed that. And a week before that, I had just got onto her about paying attention to what I was saying because she missed a lot of information because she refused to pay attention to what I was telling her. Um, and I wanted to disrupt my trip and come back from my trip and take her to her summer trip. But I know if I would have done that, I would have been fussy, grumpy, and resentful doing that the whole time. I, I mean, she would have never got a break because I would have been really, really reacting. And so I talked to my therapist and I talked to my accountability partner about it. And they was like, hey, there's consequences for her action. You did everything as a mother to set that up for her. The only thing she had to do was walk out the door and get on the get on the bus. That's the only thing she had to do. You you set everything up, and anyone it is 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 reaping the consequences from their ashes from this is going to be her. You didn't miss your trip; she missed hers. So why are you upset? You know, and I was like, wow, wow, I really wanted to you know take on that. I want to take on that. And so uh, when I got home, I did not say a word to her. I did not fuss at her. I didn't do my mother thing, my mother fussy, wussy, cussy thing. I did not do that. In fact, I was using all my energy to keep my mouth shut and mind my own business. And it took a lot of energy. And I was really, I really saw uh, myself for the first time. I was like, oh my gosh, it's taking every, all the energy I have in my body to mind my own business and to keep my mouth shut. Oh my gosh, I really have a problem. And so I laid down and I went to sleep because it was taking a lot of inner strength to keep myself together. And I laid down, I went to sleep and I got up, I got ready to go downstairs and fix dinner. And I had to pass her room to go downstairs. And when I glanced in there, I saw a cover over her TV. And I said, oh, what's going on with your TV? Why is it covered? And she said, hey, I'm grounding myself. Because I should have been paying attention when you were telling me about my summer camp. And so I don't need to watch TV or anything. I, I need to be trying to pay attention. And I don't think that she would have had that awareness had I not gave her that space and kept my mouth shut to reap the consequences of her, her behavior and her actions. She saw it first. And then I had to look at myself and say, who am I to take away somebody's right to a lesson? I was preventing people from, from learning their lessons by fixing everything. They had a high power. They had uh, their ancestors looking out for them. It was not my business to go in fixing uh, things for other people, taking on things for other people. 
And I really saw my codependency issues, how I like to control things, how I was inserting myself into things. And that's just one of the things I found. Those are just one of the things I found. But I tell you, in that first phase, you're going to find a series of things. And that was just one thing, you know, and that was my main thing, the fixer, you know, fixing things where I had no business fixing things at all. So, you know, I guarantee you, if you follow the phases in this book, you follow the tools in this book, you use the tools in this book, you're going to find out what's going on with you. Even before you reach out to a therapist or a counselor, you'll be able to tell them, hey, I got this going on, this going on, this going on. I don't know why I can't I can't stay in my lane with this. These are some impulsive, you know, fixing behaviors that I picked up. And I know it started from my childhood because we we break all that down here to make it easy for you. OK, we also let you know that you choose your therapist. You get a chance to choose. You don't just pick and choose any any random person that you want. You know what I'm saying? You don't just take what you can get. We want you to be um, mindful when you're choosing your therapist because this is your healing. You get a chance to you get a chance to be in charge of that. OK, so we want you to be in charge of your healing as well. And I want you to keep in mind, if you got your ancestors altar up, you know, and you figured they're trying to figure out what I need to do. This is what you need to be doing. You know, I see it in Ifa. I've seen it in Voodoo. Uh, this is a part like of the initiation process. You will have to do some character work. Uh, in fact, when I start doing this type of work right here, I interface with Hoodoo better because Hoodoo is all about uh, honoring your ancestors. And it all came together for me once I started doing the shadow work. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this, this, oh, my gosh. Like, I felt like I was going through an initiation process when I was interfacing with Hoodoo, doing my ancestor veneration and interfacing with Hoodoo. Hoodoo, uh, it all came together and made a, a lot more sense. Once I start doing the shadow words work, it's like I went to another level. It started making a lot more sense. So I tell you this, you know, do the shadow work. Your ancestors are going to thank you. You're going to thank yourself. And then you'll be ready to dabble in these other uh, spiritual modalities or magical modalities better because you've done your work and you know yourself and you're be you're able to uh get messages from spirit a lot more clear and better once you do your work i'm telling you this is the level up this is the level up but the real level up you cannot don't just do your shadow work do the integration part Okay, a lot of people is starting to in, they're doing start, starting the shadow work, but they're not doing the therapy part or being getting the accountability part. There, there's no integration going on. There is no inter. There has to be some integration going on uh, at, at some point, and then this work don't stop. You just don't do shadow work and, and, and just stop. It, it's a it's a lifelong thing doing character work. It's just like Mayotte. It's something to live by. It's, it's a way of life for you because there's a lot of principles in here that's going to keep you in alignment, in universal alignment. And it becomes a way of life for you, keeping yourself spiritually balanced and spiritually well. Shadow works keep you spiritually balanced and spiritually well. It also keeps you interface correctly with your ancestors. Okay, you're changing the frequency. You're changing the frequency. It was something else I wanted to say. Uh, about this work too. Okay, I, I I I can't even remember now. But do this work. Interface with this. Do the shadow work. You cannot do. And I'm gonna repeat this again for the people in the back because I don't hear a lot of spiritualists talking about this. You cannot do ancestors with ancestral uh, veneration without shadow work. You cannot do shadow work without ancestors veneration. It is a byproduct. It is a byproduct. Okay? You're not really going to spiritual level up if you don't if you don't do this type of work. You know, when I start doing tarot cards, uh, I saw people coming to me. My thing when I got into this, when I started doing the tarot, a lot of you have been following me for a, a little while. But I started start seeing 
customers keep coming back for the same thing, but they were not doing anything different. And that's when Spirit was like, okay, they need to heal right here, and they will stop having this same experience. That's when the tarot started showing me. And then that's when I started seeing my own shadow work that I needed to do. So when I tell people that even deal with the tarot, it's only so long you're going to be working for that tarot uh, with the tarot, and it's going to be encouraging you to heal. Sure is. That's why it's calling you out. It's calling you out so you will heal. So you don't have to keep asking the same question or having the same experience. That's why I want I want to ask a lot of tarot readers. Yeah, you're telling them what's going on and what's happening in your life, but are you getting to the core of the problem that's creating all all this you know all this dysfunction in their lives? Because it could be uh, uh, they could have a childhood wound. They could have a certain wound that 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 that's acting out in their life through all this other stuff that's going on. They could be contributing to it unknowingly. You know, so that's why I say do the shadow work, do your core work. And I, I you know, you're going to see great progress in your ancestral uh, veneration as well. Uh, that's going to go more, it's going to happen with more ease. The communication with your ancestors will be more at ease uh, and then continuing to do that work. You're going to see your, uh, your intuition heighten as well. Your spiritual connection is going to be stronger, and that's what we're 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 working for. Before you go on to do any other type of work, you know, do this character work because that's a part of the spiritual initiation. Spirit knows what you need, and once you do that, you will be open up to uh to more inspiration, more creativity, and a, a stronger spiritual connection. Okay. Um, but that's all for now. And I think you can get this book. Like I said, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it on my website. If you don't get this book, you know, that's fine with me, but I do want to keep in mind, do not, please don't do shadow work by yourself. Please get an accountability par partner. If you want to see results, if you really want to heal. Okay. You really want to see results, get an accountability partner, go, get into therapy that you're going to see the best results like that. I promise you will, but I don't recommend doing any shadow work alone. And I always trip off people when they say, oh, I see him do something that, you know, I seen those book uh, reviews on TikTok. And I say, oh, I did my shadow work and I feel good. And I'm like, wow, you feel good after doing shadow work. Huh? Shadow work requires change behavior. Something that we are, we're, you know, as humans, we don't like doing. So it takes a while to reap the benefits of shadow work. So when people are telling me, oh, I feel great, I did shadow work, you know, I'm just like, really? Because it requires you doing a lot of changing and makes it, making some implementations that you're, you're going to be uncomfortable with doing. This is very uncomfortable. You don't really see the benefits of shadow work until you have made it to the other side and you done did your grief work and you have seen the changes in you. Then I see people say they feel good. But while doing shadow work, it, it, there's a lot of grieving going on. There's a lot of self-acceptance going on. There's a lot of learning to love yourself going on. And it takes a minute to get on the other side. When you get through the first phase in this, then you be like, whoa. Then you start working on yourself, and you get to the second phase. Then you you it's like uh you can you 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 have your um training wheels on on your bicycle here. You know you get to the second. You go, okay, I got training wheels on. I'm I'm trying I'm trying this thing. I'm trying this thing. You know so it you know when I hear people saying I feel great after shadow work, I'm like you know uh because it's it, it has any healing happen. You know, has any healing happened? I feel great because I did the healing. I did the crying. I did the feeling, you know, resentful. I did the feeling uh, unforgiving. I, I I can talk to you about that because I actually went through those emotions and it did not feel good. But I feel so good getting on the other side of it because I was able to talk about it. I was able to process it. And now I'm able to process uh 
process it and talk about it with other people because I got the medicine behind it. And now I can administer that medicine to others because I was able to do the shadow work, get the medicine out of it and heal myself. And now that I got the medicine, I can take this medicine and come share it with other people. That is how healing happens. That is exactly how healing happens, beloved. And your ancestors are looking forward to you sharing that energy with them. Okay, and changing some things that they did not have the opportunity to change, beloved. So I hope this video, it helped you. Uh, I hope it gave you some insight in what you need to be doing when you're doing some healing work with your ancestors. And what kind of work you need to be doing to elevate your ancestors and yourself. Okay, light, love, namaste, I say love one.